this is a good story. So you can imagine two people laying bricks, they're building a gigantic wall. And the one person thinks, oh my God, you know, this wall is going to take 100,000 bricks and I'm laying one at a time and I'm wasting my life away, trivially adding to this gigantic brick wall. And what am I doing? This is absolutely miserable, brick by brick. And the other person thinks, uh, in 300 years, this is going to be a cathedral. And so the person in the second state is doing exactly the same thing at a local level, laying bricks, but each brick is related to a very high goal. And that means the reward that's attendant upon the laying of the brick is proportional to the goal, to the, what, what, to the aim of the, of the entire behavioral process. And so it seems to me, so if you're aimless and, and goalless, and I know you've done some work on goal setting, if you're aimless and goals, goalless, then you can't elicit any positive emotion. And if your goals are fragmented, which is also what happens if you're aimless or your goals lack unity, if your goals are fragmented, then no given behavioral manifestation can elicit any dopaminergic reward because it's not a step forward to anything desirable. And so there's no positive emotion. And so you can't learn. Well, according to your, according to your account, I didn't know that. See, I didn't know that when you put yourself in a state of apprehension in relationship to a valued goal, that your neuroplasticity improves and you can learn better. That's very, very cool. So, because, you know, I just developed this app for writing called Essay. And one of the things we do is we tell, pe we tell people that when they sit down to write an essay, that's the, first, the most important thing you have to do is you have to have a question in mind that you regard finding the answer to as worthwhile. Otherwise, the whole exercise is a lie. So even if you're assigned a topic, you have to find something within the topic that grips you and provides you with the motivation that's appropriate to move forward with the essay, with the attempt. And it is a lie otherwise. You're wasting your words. You're, you're, you're engaging in futile activity. And you're going to write something dull and terrible, and it's going to frustrate you and bore you while you're doing it. And that's because your own nervous system is telling you that you're participating in something that you have no belief in. And so, but if you do, if you're gripped by the questions, like, God, I really want to answer this question. It's like, well, you're in a perfect condition to begin to write an intelligible essay because you actually want the answer. And then the writing exercise is going to be gripping because you're grappling with a real mystery. And, that, and that's so cool if, if doing that also puts you in a state where you're much more likely to learn, which makes sense, right? Because if you're doing something important and you seem to be moving forward, that's a really good time to learn neurophysiologically that would make or evolutionarily that would make perfect sense absolutely you know the, the system the dopaminergic system that we're talking about anticipation and then action and reward or in some cases no reward right and the the ability to persist toward a goal regardless is a generalizable system uh, you know I, you had that chapter about you know get, get your room in order right get your, your belongings in order this is i think very relevant right now even though it's important to have higher goals and lofty goals the dopamine system is an incredible system because it is it is depletable and yet it's also renewable and it is self-amplifying. What I mean by that is, let's say that I'm somebody who doesn't know what I'm working toward. I don't have a specific goal or question. By completing even what seem like menial tasks, like making myself a cup of coffee, drinking it, cleaning up completely, drying the cup and putting yeah. it back in the cupboard, what happens is if... Even if you make that seemingly trivial goal, the goal, in addition to making the kitchen look nicer, it completes a circuit. It closes the dopaminergic yes. circuit. And when dopamine is released, and it will be, maybe not to the same extent as publishing a novel, but to some extent, dopamine amplifies our ability to think into the future, to make additional yep. plans that are unrelated to what you just did, and it in, literally increases confidence and energy. Yeah. Why? Well, for the following reason. We all think about caloric energy, but what most people are never taught, you know, and if I had 10 things I could teach people, one of them would be adrenaline, epinephrine is neural energy. It's your ability to get up and go. It's the thing that makes you jittery when you're a little nervous, but it's also what allows you to move forward, to go out for a run, to pursue any goal, cognitive or physical, et cetera. Epinephrine, which is also adrenaline, those are the same thing, is literally manufactured from the molecule dopamine. If you look at the biochemical cascade, it is dopamine is converted into 
adrenaline, which is the basis of all energy, all neural energy. Right, right. And so right. including thinking. And so if one is not in a place of being able to uh, set their goal on a particular lofty goal, a graduate degree, a book, et cetera, yet the way one gets to that is by completing things mm-hmm. in their immediate environment from start to finish and closing the dopaminergic loop. You literally- Yeah, well, those are at least, those are at least micro narratives. That's right. Right, so they're not integrated across a long span of time. But they're not nothing. And so one of the things, well, I did write about this in my first book, particularly about putting your life, putting your house in perfect order. It's like, well, if, you, if you're lost, one of the things you can do is look around and see what direction you could take locally, is fix something. And I used to tell my clients, this is a very good thing to know. Find something that you could do that would make things better that you would do. And there's a humility in that too, because especially if you're in a low energy state, it's like, oh my God, you know, I don't have enough energy to make dinner. It's like, do you have enough energy to put a fork on the table? And sometimes people are so depressed that that's really all they can do. It's like, can you take, can you take a small step forward, no matter how small that is? And so that's, I didn't, see, I knew that adrenaline was a byproduct or a, 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 down the biochemical chain from dopamine, but I didn't get the significance of that fully. So basically what you're saying is that if you implement a micro routine, even something like washing a cup and putting it back in the shelf, and you know that's a good thing because you have a shelf and there's cups on it, you've already decided that's an appropriate way to live is to have your coffee cups on a shelf. If you go ahead with cleaning out the cup and putting it on the shelf, then you've taken steps towards a a valuable micro goal. You get a dopamine kick from that, that transforms itself into adrenaline and energizes you. Which then- So that's partly the reason that it has an antidepressant effect. That's right. And then you can lean into another behavior. I mean, some of the the more successful classes of antidepressants, again, not for everybody, are the ones of the dopaminergic, uh, adrenalinergic uh, variety, right? Things like a priorone as opposed to, you know, there's a lot of debate about SSRIs. They tap into a different system. You asked about gene expression changes. Um, th- there's neuroplasticity, which is on the short scale. Completion of an even trivial task, like the putting away of the cup, will give you more dopamine, would give you more adrenaline, which if, in this analogy of either being back on one's heels, flat-footed or forward center of mass, regardless of where one is starting out, let's say depressed is back on one's heels, it's going to tilt you forward a little bit. And that's a question of what you, yeah, little, of what you yeah, do with yeah. it. So the cognitive appraisal yeah. is critical because again, with the prefrontal cortex being so critical, in establishing which of these loops gets repeated, the cognitive appraisal is critical. I'm somebody who can get things done, even if they're small. Now, if you do the cognitive yeah. appraisal- I- Or or you can, you can take another cognitive appraisal there too, which is it's small things are not small. That's right. Precisely for the reason that we just described. It's like you might have the cognitive appraisal that doing something local, like cleaning up your room is small, but it's not obvious at all that that's the case. It's not, it's not that trivial to put your immediate surroundings in order. And it can easily be the stepping stone to putting things in order on a broader scale. In fact, it's probably the necessary stepping stone to do that. And so they might seem small, but they're, they're a step ahead and ahead is a good direction. Absolutely. And so they're not as small as you might think. And so you can pat yourself on the back, especially if you're depressed a little harder than you might otherwise by saying, you know, you say, well, this is trivial, but I did it. It's like, no. If you're moving ahead, tilting yourself forward in your, in your metaphor, that's not small. You just keep doing that. You're going to get out of this paralyzed or retreat mode. And then God only knows what you're going to be able to do. That's right. And I think that if people were to look at these uh, neurological and psychological processes, because we're really talking about both, is as algorithms, right? These are, these are algorithms that have been used by every animal. Think about the animal that's foraging for food. They go down one path, they're surprised they find food. They go down another path, they, they're sure they're on a scent. They are sure. And then they get nothing. Well, what happens? They learn to remember. They automatically remember everything that led to that failure. And people are very good at remembering yeah. that. Yeah. But be good at remembering the things that led to successes and then ride those neurochemical waves to the next node of exploration. 